Stay tuned for a meeting of the City of Calabasas Commission. The meeting will be broadcast using Zoom and the City CTV Channel 3. Commission members may teleconference into the meeting without noticing or posting an agenda at their teleconference location. Besides the live TV and Zoom broadcast, the live stream of the meeting may be viewed online at cityofcalabasas.com slash CTV Live. If you want to provide public comment, press raise hand if you're using Zoom or star 9 if you're joining by phone. Just unmute yourself by pressing star 6. Say your name and the city you live in. You'll be allowed three minutes to address the commission regarding any item within the subject matter jurisdiction of the commission. If the power or internet goes out lasting more than 15 minutes, or if there's some event that prevents the commission from meeting or prevents you from providing public comment, then the meeting will be adjourned. Any items noticed as public hearings will be rescheduled to the next regular commission meeting. Any other agenda items the Commission has not taken action on will be placed on a future agenda. Now, a meeting of the City of Calabasas Commission. Thank you all for joining. Um, I'm going to call this meeting of the Special Meeting of the Environmental Commission to order. Uh, it's November 1st. Um, we will begin with roll call of the Commission members. David Cohan. Present. Beth Dartani, Whitney Schwartz, Andy Schrader. Present. Lux Hanley. Present. Noah Shapiro. Present. Great. And Noah, you're going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance this evening. Go ahead. Everybody, please stand. Put your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much for doing that. Um, first order of business is approval of the agenda. Um, do I have a motion to approve the agenda? I move to approve the agenda. Okay. Um, second. second. Andy, thank you. Okay, so uh, you are the two commissioners here, and I also agree to approve the agenda. Do I need to roll call that out, Alex? Where do you go? Okay. Um, approval of the October 3rd meeting minutes, a special meeting from October 3rd. Um, do I have a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Great. Second? Second. Great, thank you very much. Okay, next order of business. Uh, you, should, you should vote. Just because it was moved and seconded, it should be approved. Okay, so let's go back to the approval of the agenda. David? Aye. Andy? Aye. And I also am an aye. Approval of the minutes? Aye. And Andy? Aye. And I do as well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, is going to read the mission statement for us this evening and then we'll get started. The mission of the Environmental Commission of the City of Calabasas is to advise the City Council regarding the stewardship of our environment as it affects the character of the community and the quality of life of our, of our residents. We strive to balance those elements that influence the degree to which our community sustains its local or its social, economic, and physical environment while maintaining and enhancing our natural and cultural resources. Thank you, Lux. Thank you to both of our student commissioners for stepping up this evening to uh, do our um, administrative uh, duties. So thank you very much. Okay, uh, next up, do we have anyone in the public who would like to uh, provide oral communications? I'm opening up my participant thing. Do we have any hands? I don't see any hand. I do not either. Okay, all right. So we have a very full agenda this evening and um, we are gonna go ahead and get started uh, with commissioner comments. Um, I'm gonna start because I have a, uh, a request for our commissioners this evening um, to please, uh, within your comments, if you have comments about your subcommittee to hold them until the subcommittee portion of the agenda. 
so that we can uh, give them the full time that they need. Um, secondly, on December 1st is going to be uh, the, uh, I wanna say celebration, but the event um, where Mary Sue will be um, leaving. And so we are considering doing a presentation during that event and potentially participate, uh, providing her with some sort of memento or token of our appreciation. Uh, David and Andy, do you have any thoughts on that? Sound good? Second. <laughs> okay. Uh, we, we haven't uh, spent much time figuring out exactly what we're going to do, but it is an opportunity for us to show our gratitude to the outgoing mayor. Um, do, uh, uh, do you have any comments? I'll go to David first. Mr. Comments. Um, yeah, I just wanted to, um, I'll hold off on some of the comments, like you said, on things related to some of the subcommittees that I'm involved in, but I did want to share with everyone um, that I was really excited at our last uh, meeting, our last online meeting when we were all together, um, related to uh, the wildlife crossing. There was a presentation, uh, excellent presentation by Clark Stevens. And he was kind enough to um, follow up and we were able to organize a tour. We had that tour this weekend uh, on Saturday and there were over 40 people that attended that tour of the Wildlife Crossing, including uh, present, current uh, environmental commission members, uh, student members, past members of the environmental commission and other people involved in student um, in, in uh, Calabasas governance and, and uh, just a, a a wealth of people and uh, people are very excited about that and about some of the other events coming up that we'll speak about in some of the subcommittee meetings. Fantastic, sounds like a great turnout, good for you. Andy. Uh, that, uh, you know, congratulations on, on getting that all together. I know a bunch of people who went to that and, and it was, uh, everybody had some great feedback. I think having uh, uh, some sort of award for Mayor Maurer would be spectacular. She's she's certainly led the council on on uh, the 100% renewable energy effort. She led the council to get the climate um, action plan going, and uh, and and very appropriate and, and a, a great idea. I, I definitely appreciate her work, and I'm sad to see her go. Um, what else? So I, I was notified that my term ends uh, November, I think, 23rd or thereabouts. And um, Alex, do you have the, is that the correct date? Do you have that on the tip of your tongue? Yes. Uh, officially, the term ends on November of 2022. But in the protocol, all commissioners will stay in their position until new members are appointed by the city council. That may take several months. It's not gonna happen immediately. Okay, well, I, um, I do wanna just say to the, to the commissioners and everyone that, um, you know, my, my job with council member Paul Koretz ends, uh, he terms out on December 11th of this year. And I, I told my wife that we could follow her career and it looks like we're going to be moving. So, uh, so I won't be, asking to be reappointed to the commission. But uh, as I mentioned to David, when I, I talked to him earlier today, I, I wanna definitely help um, get the event going and get speakers and, and all that kind of thing. But, uh, but I wanted to let you all know. Well, thank you, Andy. And uh, thank you for your participation um, this whole time. And uh, I don't know where you're going, but I hope whatever it is, you have a great plan. So good for you. Okay, so that covers the commissioner comments. Um, you may Alex. want to ask a student member. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Uh, student commissioners, Lux. Um, so during the pumpkin festival, I helped volunteer and assisted in like distributing the food recycling bins and help educate people on it. And it was a great turnout because all of the bins were gone in less than an hour. And um, Furthermore, I met with Yara Burdan at the Wildlife Crossing and she was talking to me about the toxic tours where it like, teaches people about 
um, the low income communities and how they're impacted by sources of toxins and like pollutants. And so that's something we could definitely in, like um, incorporate into roots and shoots as well as doing um, selling maybe succulents or like doing something to engage more students at the forum planned for February. And I also talked to Ms. Ortiz today and she's the ASB advisor for Cabas is High. And so if there are any flyers or like um, announcements you want to be sent out to the school or to students, I can, she told me that she can definitely support what we're doing and send it out. So in case there's anything you want sent out to social media or anything, um, I have a contact. That's great. Good work. Very good. Um, and thank you for being at the pumpkin festival. Noah. Uh, yeah, I was just gonna say that like the recycling drawing contest when we were selecting the photos, like I was really impressed with all the drawings. Uh, and it went pretty smoothly. It took us like only I think two hours or maybe maybe a little less. I'm not sure, but it went quicker than we expected. So I was really impressed with that. And then also for roots and shoots, uh, I was thinking we do a trail cleanup soon. So I'll let you guys know the date if any of you guys want to come. But it's just like cleaning up the senior trail, and then. Uh, I'm also going into the stand tomorrow to speak with the manager in order to get like a fundraiser going for routine shoots. That's impressive. Thank you. And also Noah, thank you for being at the Pumpkin Festival. It was a great day. Okay. Um, thank you everyone for your comments. Um, we have a presentation this evening um, uh, for the planning for the climate action plan for Calabasas. And we are, um, uh, lucky to have Dean Kubani and Walker Wells here to do a presentation for us. So I'm going to turn it over to Dean uh, and you are going to take it from here. Great. Thanks so much. And uh, nice to meet those of you I don't know. Uh, let me share my screen real quick. And this will be a fairly short presentation. Um, hopefully it's more discussion than, uh, a lot more discussion than presentation. So um, what we wanted to talk about tonight is the role of the Environmental Commission in the process uh, for Calabasas uh, in preparing a climate action and adaptation plan. Um, and I wanted to give a little bit of background. I know some of you had uh, were present at the council meeting um, when uh, uh, I made a presentation uh, back in August or Walker and I did in August to the council and they gave some direction to move forward. Um, but uh, I'll give you a little bit more background. Um, Walker and I were hired by the city uh, originally to work with the city council to help educate them about climate action and adaptation plans, what they involve, what they cost, how difficult they are, um, what they look like. And um, so we completed that uh, function with our presentation to uh, city council in, in August. And then uh, uh, the city manager retained us to do some additional work uh, with the process, including helping with uh, a request for proposals to hire a consultant to actually put the plan together and some other work. So that's the reason we are here. Um, a little bit of background on us. Um, I have uh, about uh, over 25 years of experience working in uh, municipal government in the um, city of Santa Monica. I was the Chief Sustainability Officer and also the uh, Assistant Director of Public Works. I'm the current uh, Chair of Santa Monica's Commission on Sustainability, uh, which is similar to this group. Uh, I've been doing climate planning since the early 90s. I originally worked out at the Climate Institute in Washington, DC and uh, did uh, a number of climate action plans uh, and inventories with uh, Santa Monica. And I'm currently an adjunct professor out at uh, Loyola Marymount uh, University. And uh, Walker is a, uh, a certified urban planner. Um, he's worked for over 25 years in municipal, uh, nonprofit and private sector 
uh, jobs. He's he has a lot of expertise in green building and planning and sustainability, and uh, is also an adjunct professor out at the Claremont Colleges and at UCLA. So um, we uh, presented to uh, City Council on August 10th, and at that meeting, they unanimously voted to move forward to create a comprehensive climate action and adaptation plan and they directed staff to prepare requests for proposals to hire consultants to complete the plan um, when we uh, were making the presentation to council uh, we put together a, a series of four different types of plans that that uh, the council could consider going with because there's all different ways you can do a climate action plan and um, the one that they were um, most impressed with was one that was put together by the city of Albany up in Northern California. Uh, it, they, they quite like this because it's a, it's a standalone climate action plan. It's not just a, an element of their general plan. Um, it involved a lot of uh, community input and participation. Um, it's very uh, readable and accessible. It's not written like a planning document. It's uh, written like something somebody might want to read and tells you interesting and good information about the city and about what they have planned. Um, it has a number of detailed goals and actions um, and was really a, a, a very well done plan. Um, it does lack some specific implementation measures and responsibilities. Um, so at the end of the day, what council directed was uh, they wanted to move ahead with like a modified version of what Albany did. Um, and they asked uh, staff to look at in-house resources to lead the project and if necessary, hire outside experts to work on the plan uh, with staff, complete a full emissions inventory, adopt, set and adopt goals. Um, they wanted to possibly use some of the measures and actions identified in other, other plans by other cities like Agoura Hills, which just completed a very comprehensive plan. Um, they wanted to use the vulnerability assessment that the city has already completed for um, the safety element of your general plan. And they uh, wanted to, as part of this plan, prepare a detailed implementation plan that assigns responsibility for getting all this done and links into the current and future budget so that it's um, not just a plan that sits on the shelf, but actually gets done, and then also establish ongoing monitoring and reporting requirements. So um, with that direction, um, we have, uh, Walker and I have put together a draft request for proposals already that we've uh, shared with the city manager who he and other staff are currently reviewing it. And we will be finalizing that hopefully very shortly. But I wanted to just spend a, a very couple of slides here um, talking about climate planning for those of you not intimately familiar with it. Um, and then we can talk about your participation. Um, so a climate action and adaptation plan deals with both adapting to um, the impacts of climate change that we know are going to affect Calabasas. So things like drought, um, uh, increased drought, uh, more frequent and damaging storms, um, more high heat days, uh, more fire danger, uh, and putting things in place to safeguard both uh, the infrastructure that might be impacted by those things and also uh, prepare the community and the kind of um, uh, social side of things in the community uh, to be more resilient and able to adapt to those. And then the Climate action part of it is actually mitigation. So taking action to reduce emissions that cause climate change. So um, renewable energy, energy efficiency, different transportation programs, um, and uh, kind of the typical things that a lot of people think about when they think about climate plans. So both of those things happen and are laid out with uh, a set of um, 
actions and goals and timelines in a, in a climate action and adaptation plan. The typical process uh, for any climate plan is to number one, prepare uh, an inventory of greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and then based on that inventory, um, adopt a, a target for reducing those emissions. Um, and then develop a climate action plan, which is a big piece of it. Um, in parallel with this, you would also do a community vulnerability assessment, which is looking at the things that the community needs to adapt to and include that in the climate action plan. You've already done a community vulnerability assessment with your safety element, so that's uh, a head start. And then once the plan is developed and adopted, um, you're implementing the policies that are laid out in the plan. You're frequently monitoring and tracking your progress on getting those things done and seeing how effective they are at reducing emissions. You recognize your achievement, and then you go back and um, do another inventory. And so you're doing regular inventories to see how effective uh, your work is, is actually um, uh, doing and, and helping to meet your target that you've adopted. So the in a little more detail, um, the way this whole process goes is initially um, your city will issue an RFP and hire a consultant team that will be the lead in putting together this climate action and adaptation plan. Um, they will complete the greenhouse gas emissions inventory. Um, they will propose targets that will eventually be adopted as part of the plan for reducing emissions. Um, they will uh, be involved in a stakeholder engagement process. Um, part of the, and in the plan development, uh, they will develop um, climate mitigation and adaptation measures. Uh, and then they will draft a, an implementation plan. And then they will pull all of that information together into a climate action and an adaptation plan, the CAP, which will then go through review um, by various boards and commissions and the city council and then be adopted. And then the final step is to implement. So um, this is my last slide here. Um, where um, Walker and I felt that the most likely places for environmental commission involvement in this process would be in uh, completing the stakeholder engagement. So engaging with the community uh, to get input on you know, important things in the community and to um, also let them know that this is happening and um, what their ongoing participation in this may need to be, um, and also to weigh in on mitigation and adaptation measures when those are being proposed. And then also down at the uh, review, it's, it would make sense that the draft plan would come before your uh, commission for a review and recommendation to council um, since your uh, kind of primary uh, role is this is right up your alley. So um, these are the areas where we uh, see the, the, it would make the most sense for engagement and participation by uh, individual commission members and the entire commission. And at this point, I'm going to um, stop sharing my screen here and uh, open it up for a bit of discussion. Uh, Dean, do you want to lead it and take hands? What's that? Do you want to lead the discussion and take the hands as they come up? Um, you want to call on people, or you want me to? Um, well, why don't why don't you call on them? Just because I'm. Okay. <laughs> okay. It'll 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 make it a little bit easier. Okay. First, and, I'd like to just uh, call on Walker real quick if he would like to add anything before we move into a Q and A phase. Um. Thanks. Um, but nope, Dean and I put that together together. So um, I think everything that we wanted to share with you to kind of start things off is in the presentation. Great. Thank you so much. OK, uh, Andy, you got your hand up. Yeah, thank you. Uh, 
And, and thank you, Dean and, and Walker, for all your work on this. And, and uh, you know, it's been a, a terrific step forward for the city of Calabasas to be moving in this direction. Uh, I kind of thought it would be more appropriate for the, the commission to look at the uh, the other climate action plans from the other cities to uh, to help decide. Yeah, are there any cities that have included biodiversity protection, wildlife protection as part of their climate action plan? And uh, is it too late to add that into uh, what ours is going to look like? Um, well, I can say I haven't. Um, I haven't seen that um, sort of issue or element included in climate action plans. Um, uh, and it's not too late to include it in yours. So no, it's the only, in the place it would show up in probably is in the adaptation plan and, you know, thinking about how your natural landscapes are gonna be affected by increased heat or changes in precipitation. So, um, I mean, there's certainly a climate connection to all of that. Um, I think a lot of the adaptation is focused on sort of threats to property or threats to people. So Andy, I think it's a, it's an interesting angle and it can certainly be included. Yeah, the the reason I bring it up and, and you know, California, Los Angeles is situated in one of the, the world's uh, biodiversity hotspots, one of just mm -hmm. 36 biodiversity hotspots in the world. And if we don't protect wildlife habitat connectivity, you know, Wildlife and and um, and plants are going to need to migrate north, probably as uh, as things get hotter, yeah. and it's really up to us to make sure that they can do so and, and protect protect the way forward for them. So, um, you know, Calabasas has always been very um, very proud of its of its wildlife and its open spaces. So, so I definitely would encourage us to include that as part of, of the climate action planning. Um, yeah, I mean, if we're doing a, this is just a little bit of how things sort of get put into a category or a, a methodology, which is if we're doing, talking about a sustainability plan for the city, then that would totally be in there. We'd be looking at, you know, in intraspecies relationships and ecological systems. Um, with the climate plan, you end up with just sort of a narrower focus. You end up counting, you know, greenhouse gases, largely carbon dioxide, or looking at the threats that could come as a result of a changing climate. So, you know, I've been aware of this for a long time, that there's an urgency that comes with the climate action planning that is good because sustainability can lack urgency. You know, kind of moving towards sustainability, you get there when you get there. So, the climate, you know, crisis creates urgency, but it can also create a little bit of blinders. Um, so, you know, but it doesn't mean that for your climate action plan, you can't say this is an important issue and it should be should be addressed. You know, I think the good thing is that there's a way to not just think about needing to adapt those landscapes for biodiversity, but then of course having more, you know, protected open spaces, functioning urban forests, that's all good for heat mitigation you know, stormwater, you know, flood, flood management. Mm -hmm. So often you can find these like, you know, double or triple benefits. Um, and those are usually the ideas that actually are resilient and end up, you know, having a higher likelihood of getting implemented. Yeah. Now, given, given Calabasas is kind of um, as influential place in the world, uh, I would love us to, uh, to kind of expand the definition of climate action planning in that direction. Um, uh, so that was that question. Um, so, so I'd encourage us to, to include biodiversity protection. Uh, my other question is, can the commission be somehow involved in, in vetting, um, vetting the, the RFP and vetting the, the folks who, um, uh, the companies, the consultants who who apply. Sandy, I think you could just state that as an affirmative and say that the you would like to. The yeah. council, the commission should be involved in uh, vetting and picking the RFP, uh, vetting the RFP and picking the the consultant. Okay, thank you. In, in the affirmative, I move. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, I mean that makes that makes very good sense because the uh, 
I mean, the commission is is charged with providing uh, recommendations on environmental things to the city council. So, I mean, it it you're the you're the local residents who, with the environmental expertise who, uh, so it certainly makes sense that you would be part of a, a selection process. That's, um, that's uh, I'm not sure how the city does their selection process, but um, we, I guess Alex can pass that on uh, to the city manager and uh, we'll, uh, we certainly support that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, within the rules of procurement and all of these types of things, but you know, often there is a review panel so I think Andy, this is something you may directly uh, communicate with Kindon. You may ask him if you, if the commission could be involved or a subcommittee of the commission could be involved with the uh, RFP process and selection of the future consultant. Yeah. Okay, well, and I you think could check with the other, you could think check with Alex oh, is, is uh, Alex is our voice to the, to the city. So, uh, if you'd like to put us in touch with Ken, that'd be great. Sounds good. Yeah. And you could check to see if it looks like the other commissioners are in agreement, but you could check to make sure it's not just you. So. Um, great. Yes. Yeah, so Alex, um, the stage that the RFP review is at, are you aware of what, where they are with that? Kendon? Uh, I think a, a few staff members are also, uh, asked to review the RFP before it's finalized. So um, I think it will go to the city council. I'm not sure, but I think it will go to the city, to the next city council meeting for final approval. So does council actually have to approve an RFP? I don't know. That's why I'm guessing that it, it, that's probably the timetable to okay. meet that deadline. So is there a realistic option for the Environmental Commission to have an opportunity to weigh in? I can ask, I can communicate the message. Okay, all right, okay. Would, would, it, be, would it be more effective if we made a formal motion? I mean, Andy kind of alluded to that because I, I, I think that way it might carry a little more weight if it showed that we're, that we're all supportive of that. I think it, would that, would that help if we did a formal vote, Alex? Would that help you when you're communicating, or or do you? Is it good enough for you just to say, "My sense is that everyone feels the same that we should be included." I think it's good enough. I will just communicate the commission's interest, participate in the RFP process. Okay, so we're going to leave that to you to take as an action item away from this discussion. Yes, and you'll let us know if there is a requirement for us to do. More. Sure. I will. Okay. Okay. Thank you. David, you have your hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. Andy, are you done? Good. Okay. David. Yeah. I, I've got several questions. And I also want to thank you, Dean and Walker, for for being here and for your presentation and and frankly for your participation in this whole process. Um, I think as you can tell, we're on the Environmental Commission, we're chomping at the bit to have some action happen. And we've been waiting, uh, city council has been saying, just wait, just wait, just wait. Eventually there's gonna, we're gonna get to this point. So the fact that you guys are here is very exciting. Um, and I, I do wanna, um, I, I'm gonna make a couple of questions, but I do wanna echo uh, comment that Andy made. I think you might've heard at the beginning of the presentation that I was fortunate enough to organize a tour with Clark Stevens of the wildlife crossing. And that, you know, that's obviously somewhat noteworthy. It's happening here in our backyard between Calabasas and Agoura. And the, during that presentation, there was a lot of discussion about, uh, about, uh, you know, sustainability and, and the and biodiversity. And, and I mean, we were learning about how the, the area used to all be sheep, but it's been, Part of the reason that the, the fires are raging is because you know we haven't planted well and we haven't planned ahead and so that, and 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 that's part of the reason that the animals have been chased away and and part of the need for the you know and, and on and on and on and on it all it all goes together and you guys know this better than we do but um i i also echo andy's comments that i think 
an element of that would would be appropriate if possible. Um, I also wanted to see since two of the five city uh, city commissioners um, environmental commissioners aren't weren't able to make this. Would it be possible to share your presentation with Alex and, and have him forward it on to all of us um, so that they can at least see the highlighted items that that we are being tasked with, um, number one. And then number two, that Albany presentation or, or any other things like that that you think might be useful. My, my guess is that we're gonna end up forming a subcommittee to, to work on this. And um, it would be nice to have some direction and, and not to be recreating the wheel, to have some idea of what other places have done and what, you know, the, like I know right before completing task holder engagement was targets. And it would be nice for us to kind of have a sense as to, you know, the whole process, I guess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I mean, a couple of thoughts, you know, I think this has been recorded, um, as was the council meeting. So, you know, they've, you know, Dean did a much longer presentation about our evaluation process for the council. Um, so I don't know, Alex, if that's still something that can be accessed and we could, you know, just share, look at minute, you know, whatever it was, 22 to 45 or something. Um, and then on the targets, uh, this used to be um, more bespoke of a process to figure out what are the targets that individual cities should choose and help figure out what was achievable. What's happened in the last, I don't know, seven, eight years is that the state has adopted targets through um, Senate Bill 32 um, and then through Senate Bill 100 on renewable energy. Um, and, um, and so we're kind of given these targets, you know, the 40% reduction by 2030 and 80% reduction by 2050, that's reduction from 1990 levels. Um, so it's more saying, well, these are the targets the state has set, how close you know, is Calabasas to those targets, taking into consideration things like the low carbon fuel standard or PAVLI, um, the renewable portfolio standard, what you're doing with renewable energy, upgrades to the building code, which kind of bends the curve down. And then what's the gap that needs to be addressed through local actions? So um, with the on that target, it's more just to confirm that you want to emulate what the state has already determined, um, and which is kind of good because we used to spend a lot of time going back and forth over the targets. Now we can focus more on what are the, you know, the measures and the actions that need to be, you know, taken and agreed to, to actually see the, see the um, emissions reductions. Okay. Um, I'll just go back to this biodiversity. I think the wildlife crossing is amazing. You know, I've been thinking about this for years, how um, arrogant it is that we've disrupted all of these animals, you know, sort of natural pathways and this reduction in biodiversity. So I don't want to go off on a tangent here, but I think that that's happening is great. And it does reinforce, you know, including it in your plan as really being, you know, at the, the leading edge of, of thinking about this sort of inter interconnectedness. Yeah. I, and I would just mention that I don't think we necessarily have to write into the RFP specifically that that needs to be part of the plan, but as part of the input process from this commission and others in the community, um, it could be made known. And you know, basically what you were just talking about, David, is um, really a kind of resilience and adaptation thing. You're trying to repair some of the local environment to a standard where it's not gonna burn as much uh, basically do plantings that are both going to um, help sequester some carbon, but also make the area less uh, uh, susceptible to fire and those types of things make it. So there, you know, I think that would be a natural um, adaptation uh, measure that would be in your plan as it goes forward. So uh, it does, you know, and there's probably several of those things that, um, even though you're not doing a specific kind of biodiversity protection plan, many of the measures for resilience, at least, uh, would help get you there. Okay. Yeah. To answer yeah. your question, I forwarded the PowerPoint to all commissioners on October 27. And uh, it is also posted on city's website along with the agenda. You, you know, I like... I. Alex, I do like the idea. I did attend that 
or, or pr watch your presentation to the city council, but um, it would be helpful if you're able to maybe identify where in that meeting the presentation occurred, because I think it would be helpful for, especially since again, we've only got three of the five of us attending this. And at some point we're, and Andy is, you know, it's, we're not sure where, you know, how involved he'll be able to be next year. It, it, it makes sense for us to, to engage the others as much as possible. And um, I mean, this, this is our big charge is the, is the reality in my opinion. I mean, I'm, with all due respect to Earth Day and Arbor Day and the Pumpkin Festival and all the, you know, our traditional things, I'm, uh, I think this is huge. And I'm, uh, yeah, if, if we're able to resend, you know, resend that, I would really appreciate that. Are you asking for the PowerPoint presentation that Dylan Walker made tonight or the one that they made to the com city council? You know what, I, I, I guess I'm asked, I like the whole presentation at the city council. It was a, it was more detailed. I don't know, what, what is your opinion? What, Dean and Walker, what do you think? Uh, the, well, or, I would, yeah, I think it's all available. The, um, you, you've got a video of the entire council. So maybe Alex can flag where in that video our presentation was. And then the council, the packet for that council meeting on August 10th included every one of the four um, climate action plans that we spoke about. Oh, I mean, right, right, all, right. I mean, there's hundreds of pages of them in there. So I, I don't want, I, I don't think that's necessary. I, I don't want to, I don't want to send so much that people don't respond. I, what I'm trying to do is get right, the, that's just, that, I was just saying you can send people a link and, and people can look at as much or as little as they want. So there's a link to uh, in that council agenda, there's a link to the PowerPoint that we gave and then there, you know, it's all been videoed. So I think maybe Alex, Alex could just maybe flag where in the meeting, the video yeah. the presentation was. Yeah, I mean, I just feel like you have, there is a recording, you may as well make use of it. I think it is just a, I mean, I get sent stuff, you know, starts at minute, you know, 25 or whatever. I think that's, oh. all, we're, that's all we're talking about. Right. So, David, uh, all of the documents are on the past agenda, and then there is a link to the video. Um, so it can be gathered, I guess, as your point is gather it and let's let's have it available so that when we get to the point where we're going to be working on it, we have all of the assets available. And well, they are. My, yeah, my point is, if, if, if the RFP is being voted on at the next city council meeting, then we're then we're or this process or has already begun and yes it has so, since august the 10th yes yeah yeah so if, so if that's the case and the environmental commission plays an, an important role in this then then yeah i would say yeah i mean i would say this should be a, a high priority get, getting this back to everybody and having all all five of us on board with it all right just want to add a little bit to what dean was saying about the sort of biodiversity issues and, and how it would be folded into resilience. You know, I think um, LinkedIn, we would still, you know, people will read, you know, the RFP to, to kind of look at who needs to be on their team. So, I mean, if there is a desire to have sort of, you know, ecosystem analysis for biodiversity, like we just need to say there needs to be sort of an ecological, they need a team with like an ecologist. Mm -hmm. um, because you know some of the firms are coming at this from more like you know science engineering, not so much natural systems. So we we can look at the the language and see how to to send that message that there need to be that either within whoever you know within their firm or with whoever they team up with, because it is a little bit unusual. So, right, David, do you have? I'm sorry, you put your hand up. Are you done, David? Do you have more questions? No, I'm just debating whether to make a motion that we form a subcommittee, frankly, but, but I, I mean, I, I just, we don't meet again for a month, you know, for another month. Yeah. All right. That's fine. I guess I don't have any questions. Oh, okay. No, I mean, you can hold that thought. We're still having our Q&A um, yeah, because yeah. I have a few questions myself. So okay. thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. So because we are so connected with the Santa Monica mountains that surrounds us. Um, 
is there a way in which we can, you know, uh, get to their resources, their information to help build up what we do? Because I mean, they, they must, I mean, they are in control of this, a lot of the open space that's around us. Um, and so I don't know how, when you are that close to such a rural area, how you would then work with them in order to do that. Have you seen that before? Dean, I was thinking about your experience with the, the Malibu Foundation, just, I mean, that talks about sort of how the developed area interacts with the protected natural, you know, and the, probably the conservancy right. or, I mean. Right, exactly. so um, what we uh, have included in the draft RFP is one of the tasks of the consultant team that's hired is to review all of the relevant information that exists out there related to climate and resilience in the area. So the Malibu okay. Foundation put together a, a uh, climate resilience plan for the entire Santa Monica Mountains region. LA County's got a climate action and adaptation plan for the region. Um, so we, we've called out each of those different documents that we're aware of. Um, so that uh, they, the consultant is factoring that in. So they will know who are the players in the, in the region. And if there's relevant stuff, they, they'll be reviewing that and, and hopefully tying it in. Okay, good. Because I'm yeah. sure we can certainly gather uh, a great deal of information from, from them um, to supplement what we do. So um, anyway, I just wanted to bring that up. Uh, secondly, so is the Albany plan, is it in, in implementation? The, in the city of Albany, have they implemented their plan, the one we're modeling after? I mean, it's adopted. It was adopted by city council. Yeah. So they um, have gotten to that to that stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, what Dean mentioned is that it, it does a good job of, you know, setting targets, identifying the things that they can do. Um, it doesn't have a, like a... a you know, a very robust sort of implementation plan to say exactly who's responsible for doing what, you know, how much it might cost, where the money might come from. So it doesn't say public works will do this, planning will do that. That's in the city's manager's office. That needs to be done in collaboration with the county. This can be folded into the capital improvement plan. Um, so this is really sort of Albany plus is what we've talked about, you know, for, okay. for Calabasas. Um, I mean, Dean has been at this municipal sustainability <laughs> Work for a long time and you know like the um you know implementation is what matters and i often get asked you know well what's the best plan and i'm like the best plan is the one that gets implemented it's not the one that looks the best or has the most measures or the coolest graphics or you know it's the one that actually gets put to use so again that's why we feel that you know that plus needs to be added on to what they did um, but I've I've actually spoken to the consultants uh, or the um, staff at Albany that were in charge of that are basically in charge of implementation and were involved in the process while the plan was being developed. So they have uh, an in-house team that's leading the implementation, and they've also brought in a, a Civic Spark intern that's specifically working on implementation as well. So I don't know what pieces they're, you know, they, they've, they're prioritizing things internally and doing that. Um, I think the difference between Albany and Calabasas is Albany has some dedicated staff that are working on this um, as kind of the main part of their job or a major part of their job. Um, my understanding at Calabasas is there's much less staff resources um, available to, to work on this stuff. So that's going to be a major uh, part of, and I think a discussion with the consultant team when they're putting together an implementation plan, who's going to do this and how's it going to get done? Because that, um, that that's going to be the real crux to making this plan a, a useful plan that's actually achieving the targets. Okay, that that's a very good distinction yeah. between adopting and implementing. Yeah. Yeah. So how long did it take them to adopt it, roughly, from the time that they determined that they were going to move forward with that to the point where they adopted it? 
it was about 17 months, I think, was the um, let's go ahead and do a plan process to hire a consultant, bring the consultant on board, and then that that whole thing to till it got to council. Okay. Thank you. Just looking for that insight, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you both for your presentation. Uh, Noah or Lux, do you have any comments? And David, I'll come back to you. I just want to check with them quick. Noah, Lux, do you have any questions, comments? I don't, but I really appreciate your presentation. I, I learned a lot from it, and how the whole plan works is really interesting. Yeah, same. Thank you. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you both. Okay, David, we'll come back around to you. Uh, sorry, just a quick question. Do, do the consultant, the, the consultants that are chosen after the RFP, do they identify the stakeholders? Um, mm. they would, well, they would be looking to city staff and possibly you to, to identify the stakeholders. So um, I thought, I mean, our first, the first thing on, I, I apologize, I interrupted you. Oh, so what I was going to say is, I mean, the, in the little bit of research that I've done since I came on board to um, start talking to the council is I looked in and saw that, you know, the major stakeholders in um, Calabasas seem to be, you know, the HOA groups are really big stakeholders. Um, you know, there are probably some religious organizations um, there may be some environmental organizations, um, but it's, uh, you know, the schools are, are an obvious one and then any other civic groups that are out there. So, I mean, they, the consultant will be looking for input on who should we be talking to and involving in this. And I think like you guys would be a great resource for that. So that, that, and I was thinking the same, that's why I asked the question because it, it I, I just made some notes from your presentation that the first, the first place that was highlighted where we start to be involved was complete stakeholder engagement. Right. And so I was just wondering, that's why I was asking, are, are the stakeholders already identified or are we part of mm -hmm. the process we'll of, of helping that. identify them and then engage and, or, you know, what does that really look like or what did it perhaps like JC yeah. was saying, up in Albany, how, you know, or, or as an example, well, I mean, how it really happens is that there's a, um, you kind of do what, well, the way that ideally should happen is there is sort of a separate stakeholder engagement plan that's put together where the stakeholders are identified across all those groups that Dean mentioned, including, you know, the, the chamber, you could also decide that the county is a stakeholder or Clean Power Alliance is a stakeholder, you might want to cluster them in different groups, and then they would say, okay, we think we need to do this, we need to interview, you know, 10 different people, we need to have five focus groups with people around different affinities, say energy or mobility, buildings and development, natural systems. Um, uh, they may decide that there needs to be a community workshop, virtual or in person. And so that plan gets put together and then it's usually run by city staff and it could be run by you guys as well to say, you know, does this look like the right way to reach um, the right people? you know, as well as reaching enough people or giving enough people a opportunity to, to participate. So, um, you know, there's different methods, um, you know, to serve different ends. Um, and, you know, and at some point you say like, you know, who calls the shots in town and would we really need to have on board and do we have them included in our stakeholder process or do we need to sort of reach out to them or that organization directly? So what, what, what happened in Albany, um, what the staff told me is they, the staff uh, were the leaders, they kind of drove the community stakeholder engagement. The, their city council said, we really want a lot of community engagement in this. So the staff knew who was there. They, you know, they brought the consultants to the meeting to give presentations and answer questions, but the staff were driving it. Um, there are other plans where a consultant team, like in Santa Monica, we had the consultant team putting together a lot of the meetings and um, kind of facilitating that process more. Um, there's hybrid models. My, my sense in talking to Kinden is that the, um, I mean, there's limited staff resources again, uh, 
obviously the more you want to do with community stakeholder engagement, the more expensive it's going to be if you're asking the consultant to do it all. If there's a way to, for your group, for instance, or other commissions and other, you know, um, people in the community elected, appointed, and whatever, to be involved in that process, that can help make it work too. I mean, it, there, there's a number of different ways you could do it. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I mean, that presentation, it's, you know, we tried to keep it concise, but, you know, it's probably like shape and conduct stakeholder engagement. So it's not right. complete, may sound too, too final of a, right. of a verb. And then, um, you know, David, I, I get a sense that there's a concern that like the horse has already left the barn, but, you know, I think there's a draft of the RFP with Kinden. you know, we're having this meeting, there's a desire to have the commission involved. And, um, and I think there's a lot of ways for you to be involved. Um, so, it, you know, one of our questions was here was just, to, you know, how much and to, to what extent. So it sounds like there's a desire to be involved quite a bit. And that's some of the message, I think, to go back to the leadership at the city. Well, I guess, yeah, I, I guess, JC, based on that, I, I think I would like to make a, a proposal that we form a subcommittee because the reality is for our entire commission to meet, we're a bit unwieldy since we only meet every two months. And if we had a subcommittee, it's, it's a lot David. more. It's, it's, oh. it's, so, I mean, I would like to formally make that motion. I mean, David? I, David, can we hold that till we get to that part of the agenda where we create new subcommittees so we can have a discussion about it? Sure, sure, sure. Okay, I prefer fine. to do that. Fine, so I'm fine that tabling it later in the meeting. Yeah, fine. fair enough. Fair I appreciate enough. that you brought it up and I, I absolutely think that it, it needs to be explored and I know that our timing is always short, um, but I would yeah. like to um, wrap up this agenda item and say a big thank you to Dean and Walker um, and really appreciate that you guys uh, took the time and uh, also spent time with your very detailed answers for us. So thank you very much for joining us. Our pleasure. It's great to meet you all. And uh, uh, hopefully we'll be seeing you more in the future. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you for your work. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay. All right. Um, I just wanted to make sure that we wrap that up and got to the point where we could really give some um, open discussion to what we, we want to do as a commission. So, um, all right, we need to get to our next order of business this evening, and that is to review and uh, finalize the selection of drawings for the uh, 2023 Recycling Awareness Calendar. So, uh, I'm going to turn this over to Alba, who's going to take it from here. Um, we have some decisions to make, to finalize, and then we will have all, all of our um, finalists and they will become the calendar for this year. So Alba, are you ready to take it on? Yes, thank you. Good You're evening, welcome. everyone. So I'll, I put together a small PowerPoint so we could um, have a little bit of uh, facts about what was uh, done for this year's recycling and what was and how many drawings we did receive. And then also I, um, I will present to you some of the winners. We did have a few ties, which I will ask for everybody to vote on on today's meeting, um, either by text or if you wanna send me a chat directly, we could do it that way with the number of the drawings. So I'll basically work through each, um, each grade. And if I don't have a winner, then I'll ask for, for a vote from the student members and the commissioners that are uh, attending today. So let me share my screen here. Alba, may I just ask a quick question? Yeah, of course. Sorry, this is David. And, and by the way, I want to thank Alba and Lux and Noah and Beth. We were there for, as Noah said, and, uh, um, and Alba did double duty. She translated the Spanish applicants for us and even though i'm i'm bummed that i don't see any of those in the finalists i appreciated all the work that you you spent doing this but um quick question for you the, the student members voted on these with us didn't did they or did the you student get members them? vote on the contest yes oh good 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 i was hoping so thank you we do have a spanish drawing that's up for a tie so if it's voted on sorry cool and by the way, you all received the PowerPoint presentation. Hopefully, 
you have reviewed it and you are ready to vote on the ties. Okay. Um, Alba, do you want to, I, I just want to say to everybody once again that to do it, if you're going to chat to Alba on the tie, it needs to be in the private chat. And she's going to explain that to us when we get to the tie. Yes. Right? Okay. Yes. And I sent in the chat as well my my number in case it's easier to text me the number of the winning drawing. Okay, so for this year's 2022 recycling drawing contest, we received a total of 1,675 entries. Um, a total of 73 teachers participated. From each of the winners um, that are chosen, they'll receive a $25 gift certificate and the teachers that participate will receive a $50 certificate per packet submitted. Um, like uh, like uh, a subcommittee was formed, and like David said, so David, Beth, and thanks to the student members, Noah and Lux, who were there, they were able to reduce the amount of entries to select a total of 107 entries. And from those, uh, everybody had a chance to vote on them. And the ones with the majority vote from each grade was the chosen winner for, for, the, for, for that particular grade. Um, depending on how many entries we did receive, some grades got two, two winners per grade. So we could have a total of 14 drawings chosen. So for the kindergarten grade, uh, this is the winning drawing, Madison Harris from Lupin Hill Elementary School. This is teacher Ka Kathleen McNamee. I am sorry if I totally mispronounced these things. Um, for the first grade, this is when we had a tie. Uh, for this one, this is uh, drawing number 16. So I'll ask if uh, I'll work through the drawings and I'll go back and forth so everybody gets a good chance to see all the all the drawings. And for this one, we have a total of four drawings that receive the same amount of votes. Um, so this is the first one, number 16. Hey, Alba, will we be, we be voting for one or two drawings? Two drawings, thank you, that's a good point. So for this one, it gets two drawings. So if you could send me two numbers, so this is number 16, number 18, number 19, and number 22. And at this time, everyone is casting their votes, correct? Yes, I started receiving votes here. Great. Did everybody vote? Alba, can you go back to the first grade? Yes. Oh, sorry. I think I must have. Let me just double check here. Alba, when we did this in person, a few years back, we actually had to do two rounds of voting on, on one grade. Yeah, we might have to do this because I think we have a tie again.
by the way, the calendar content of the calendar is ready. And uh, we are going to scan the winning drawings and send them to the print shop. We are expecting to receive 5,000 copies by the end of next week. And we will immediately distribute them to schools, city facility, and a few supermarkets and uh, Rite Aid. So everybody will have access one way or the other to pick up their copy. That's great. Thank you, Alex. Okay, we do have another tie. So it'd be between, so I'm gonna ask everybody to vote one more time between 16, 19 and 22. So this one, 16. So I need two more, two, two, two votes from everybody between 16, 19 and 22. I'm sorry, you need two votes for one. Two votes. So choose two of the three. 22, 19, and 16. Go Do that again, please. 16, 19, and 22. Have anybody else to be so? Of course, we have another tie. <laughs> so, the 22 is the one with the most votes this time around, so that would be one of the chosen ones. And then, now I'm gonna ask everybody just to pick one out of 16 and 19. Sixteen, nineteen. Alba, can you go back to the winning drawing for the first grade? Sorry, that's the winning one, yeah. So 22 is already selected, right? Yes. Can you read the name of the student and teacher and school? Yes. Okay, so this is from, this is the students, Oliver McClure, and it's, he's from Lupin Hills Elementary School, and teacher's name is Lori Curseja. Great, congratulations. Okay, let me do this real quick. So the winner for this third round is 16. So for 16 is Eliana Whitco uh, from Bay Laurel Elementary School and teacher's name Sharon Horn. Congratulations. Great. Let's move on to the second grade. Okay, so second grade winner is Alyssa Lynn from Lupin Hill Elementary School and the teacher's Miss Hugh. Hughes. And we had two winners for the second grade and this Kimia Farmani from Bay Laurel Elementary School, teacher is Angie Lamonte. The third grade winner is Mila Rubel from Bay Laurel Elementary School and teacher's name is Van Vanessa Savage. Third grade is Ivanka Lishik from Lupin Hill Elementary School and teacher's name is Randy Loeb. 
fourth grade winner, Amelia Binford from Chaparral Elementary School, teachers Laura Ekizian. And another fourth grade winner, Veronica Saraikina from Lupin Hill Elementary School, uh, and the teachers Jen Wurzel. This one was pretty cool because they actually used like media. Uh, fifth grade, uh, so this one we have a, a tie and this we're gonna select one drawing be, from uh, five drawings. So we, I just need one and it's number 66, number 67, number 68, 69, 70. And we need two on that one? Just one. Can you go back one more time? So 66, 67, 68, 69, 70. I'll go back one more time. got everybody's votes in. So the winner for this, for the fifth grade would be number 69. Let me pull up the winner. And the student name is Luciana Fisher from Chaparral Elementary School. And the teacher is Laura Ikizia. Congratulations. Okay, for sixth grade, Skylar Hill from A.E. Wright Middle School and the teacher's name is Julia Herrera. We got another one from sixth grade winner is Noemi Dyser from A.E. Wright Middle School and teacher Julie uh, Herrera. And this is the seventh grade winner, Claire Balthrop from A.E. Wright, A. Wright Middle School and teachers Haley Tepper. And this is our last uh, tie drawing. So this is between two. Um, we just need one. So this is number 100. And then number 106. Pay attention that 106 is in Spanish. Okay, I think I got everybody's vote. And for this one, the winner is 106. And student's name's Evan Eva Eva Cartman from AE Wright. And the teacher is Holly Stivers. Congratulations. So final vote for today would be on the cover. Um, we had three drawings that had the same amount of votes. And which is the most votes. Um, so we just, I just need everyone to pick one of the three as the cover for the, for next year's calendar. So it's either number 30, number 94, or 58.
looks like this year's cover winner is number 58, Amelia Binford from Chaparral Elementary School. Congratulations. And that is all for my presentation. Thank you, everybody, and congratulations to all the winners. Thank you for your help. Thank you, Alva. No problem. Well, this was a great process that we went through from uh, initiating the uh, recycling drawing contest to now. It took about six months of effort from city staff to communicate with all teachers, all the schools, and uh, communicating the team and flyer and getting everybody on board. So uh, it was a good process to go through and hopefully the calendar is gonna please everyone. Great. Okay, so now that we've completed this year, <laughs> we need to establish a theme for next year. Um, and as Alex can back me up if I don't say it actually perfectly, uh, it needs to be related to recycling and uh, trash, right? In order to abide by the sponsor's um, requirements. So whatever theme we come up with, we need to stay in that realm. And it also needs to be something that from kindergarten to eighth, to eighth grade, um, they're able to manage. So we can go around and you... give your theme ideas uh david you have your hand up physically <laughs> not your little hand um but go ahead yeah um i've uh done a few of these and there's so there's a lot of quote unquote recycled themes but there's one that one thing that i came up with when i was thinking about this that i have never thought about or never remember being done alex might might be able to remember but one experience i've had with all the different schools is that kids have a tendency to throw things in the wrong bins. So it might be kind of a fun theme to say, throw it in the right bin or so, or you know, recycle in the right place or something. I don't know the exact linguistics or the exact wording, but something to so that kids focus on putting recyclables in the recycling bin, trash in the trash bin. I mean, part of the reason that the senior trail is has to be cleaned up is because kids don't throw their stuff in the right in the trash or so that was just a thought of mine was encouraging them to get it right in the right recycle correctly or accurately or, you know. How about know your bins? Yeah. I love it. Something like that. Well, let's ask our student member how we can articulate yeah. the theme better to kids. Lux, Noah, do you have any thoughts? Uh, I really like David's idea. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was just saying that I really like David's idea of uh, like explaining or drawing uh, which items go in which bins. Yeah, I agree. I think that's a really good idea. I think you can also like incorporate a little bit of composting or like, the food recycling about putting like leftover food you would usually throw away in the normal trash to separate it and put it in like a separate bin maybe to put it in your green bin instead of like with all your other trash. Uh, yeah, so I think that, I mean, uh, does anyone else have any ideas? Andy has his hands up. Oh, sorry, Andy. I can never see in this top left corner. Go ahead, please. Uh, I, you know, I have have a, uh, maybe a point of order question, which is who is the sponsor of the calendar contest? The, there isn't an official sponsor. The funding for this contest comes from the trash tax that is called AB 939, which is the assembly bill adopted in many years ago, I think in 94, that allows cities to spend money collected from the tax or call it from trash tax to spend it on promoting recycling and waste reduction. Because one of the things we've kind of been working on um, 
in the city of LA is is uh, recycling is the last option, you know, and and redesign, reuse, repair, you know, et cetera. So um, anyway, I, I like uh, I like Lux's idea about doing something on on composting that um, I think the city council made a pretty big uh, point of saying they wanted some some composting education to come up. And I think that would be a good uh, a good angle to take. One of the one of the issues is what they said in the beginning, Andy, that the sponsor requires it to have something to do with recycling. Like I in the past, I had said, "Why don't we do something about water? Why don't we do?" And I was shot down because food, food that's food recycling. Food recycling, right? Th that was a theme we did one of the years that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Two thousand twenty one. Yeah, but all of this stuff is is relevant. It's there isn't a right answer, frankly. Uh, um, yeah, it's tough because again, we have to be able to have a kindergartner be able to understand the concept, um, and uh, be able to draw something that that is you know comprehends the concept. Um, okay, I'm I'm going to pitch an idea then, which is okay. What are all the things you do before recycling? Before recycling, what do you do before? I I I think it can work. So you have if, two two themes recommended. One by right. Andrew, one by uh, David. Yeah. So uh, the idea of the, uh, this year was supposed to be reuse. You know how to reuse something. But this would be more definitive, like uh, before you recycle, you X, you know, you fill in the blank. Before you recycle, do this. So that, that could that could definitely work yeah. because we, we're talking about recycling, but we're also talking about, you know, conserving and and, and that type of thing. So, OK, so there's two, two ideas. J JC? Yeah. I like Andy's also. I think I'm, I'm perfectly fine with either one. But Alex, may I make a request? Every year we kind of scratch our head. Is it possible to make a note of whichever one of, assuming there's just these two or whatever, is it possible to try to make a note so that a year from now, you, maybe someone can remind us from staff that a year ago you guys, you know, put the, this was your second choice and you, you didn't pick this one. Maybe you want to consider it this year, you know, for the 24 calendar or something, you know. Yeah, certainly. I mean, since I've been here, we, we did the, um, uh, what did we do in 2021, Alex? We did the, um, I can pull out the flyer. Hold on. Let me. Right. But I think, I mean, you make a good point, David. We don't have to reinvent the wheel every year. Yeah. Um, the 2021 theme was I can reduce and reduce. That's right. Good waste right. by dot, dot, dot. Right. Right. And, uh, I can and then also, this year was the re the how to what to reuse. So okay. Right. I can also share the 2020, uh, which was best way of recycling in my school. Or dot dot dot. That was 2019. Okay. Well, um, I think we have two very strong candidates for the theme. Um, I would like to uh, vote on what we think. Um, I'll start with uh, Andy, we'll go back to you. Whether, oh, so the two, I'm sorry, let me, let me say them. The, the first would be know your bins or something like that to identify the right way to recycle or um, um, discard, I will call it, um, but in the right way so that it does get recycled. Um, and the second would be uh, what do you do before recycling? And we'll refine the titles, but these are the two themes. So, Andy, do you have a preference? I feel like I should uh, uh, abstain. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Since we're voting on what on, on no, 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 it's okay. We want to do that. It's we don't have to have 10, 10 ideas. I, I think you have a very strong idea. 
So I'm just taking a tally. So do you vote for the know your bins or the what do you do before recycling? Well, I think that I, I like the know your bins one, um, but I'm going to vote for mine. Okay. Sounds great. Um, David. Yeah, I was just going to say, call on me so I can do the exact opposite. And that way it's, it's the same as me and Andy abstaining. I am perfectly happy. I just want to say this for the record. If you pick the other choice, it's perfectly fine. I like them both. I honestly. Me too. Okay, terrific. Uh, Lux. Um, I'll pick the know your bins. Okay. Noah? Uh, same here. But you got to say it. Same doesn't, know your we bins. don't have, same is not a theme. Okay. <laughs> Which one? Uh, the knowing your bins. Okay. Um, I would have selected the what do you do before recycling. So um, we will do with the know your bins. And again, that was a pen name for, this, for the theme. We need to uh, flesh out a, a descriptor that will work for K through uh, eight or whatever, um, so that it's clear what we're asking them to do. But I do think that that is something that they can identify with if we describe it correctly. Just for the record, we need the exact wording of the theme. The theme is um, know your bins. That and we works. Will, yeah. yeah, that works, JC. I like it. I think it works. And yeah, I, I, think I think you came up with that. I think that's yeah. clever. Yeah, yeah I, it's good. Okay. Fantastic. All right. That completes uh, uh, 3B. So now, uh, as the night progresses, we're going to go into our um, subcommittee reports. If you have a subcommittee report, please raise your hand and I'll call on you and you can then do your part. Anybody have any subcommittee reports? David. Yeah. Um... And, and say which subcommittee for the minutes. Okay, so I'm going to do for three subcommittees. The first one is the recycling drawing subcommittee. I just want to big, give a shout out to Beth, Lux, Noah, and Alba for her help. And um, as, as was already stated, they managed to power through, uh, how many was it, Alex? 1,200, 1,300, 1,400? 1,600. 1,600 and get it down to that final hundred that we all had, which was much more manageable and they did it. And, and it was thoughtful. Uh, Beth made us really think about the, the theme of reuse and following the rules that applied. And so I applaud everybody that was involved. Uh, may I move on to the next subcommittee? Oh, yes. Yes, please, please go ahead. You've got the floor. All right. Uh, second. Actually, yeah, a second, I guess there's just two subcommittees. The second one is the annual environmental forum subcommittee uh, that I'm on with Beth. And very, very, very excited that um, with staff's assistance that we were able to um, get the top choice of our, remember, we had a special meeting. We, we, we chose a subcommittee. We had uh, uh, the subcommittee came, came to you, came to the entire commission with um, a half dozen options. We whittled it down. Um, we, I think Beth whittled it down to five, and then our commission whittled it down to four. We brought those four back to staff and city council. City council and the one that had the, the most support from our group ended up being the one that was chosen. And that theme is, drum roll please, changing Calabasas yards and gardens to meet the new era of water scarcity. And uh, I really appreciate again, how much staff was involved in this. And just wanted to let you know that um, Beth and I have already been reaching out to people in the community. Uh, they're about, um, we're forming a panel. We've reached out to the water district and um, to some of the local um, gardening stores and to uh, there's some horticulturalists who would like to potentially have tables and hopefully Roots and Shoots will have a significant presence and, uh, and possibly, like they said, maybe sell um, succulents as, was, as they Roots and Shoots did, I don't know, five, six years ago. I remember Sidney Bregman and Noah 
did, and they, they raised a fair amount of money for Roots and Shoots. This is going back probably, I don't know, half a dozen years ago. So um, um, I did also reach out to um, former mayor, uh, Fred Gaines, and asked him if he would be um, available and interested in moderating the panel. And he said he would be honored. And uh, I think that he would be wonderful. He was supportive when I was on the commission previously. And he was, um, uh, I think that he, as a former mayor, I think he'll also attract more people, a, a larger audience as well. That's it. That's it. That's my, that's my subcommittee report. I'm happy to take questions. If you have other suggestions of others, I actually, Alex, wanted to ask you if potentially there's someone on staff that might be a good person to have sit on the panel. Um, you know, somebody familiar with gardening or can speak about gray water. Or I mean, we're going to have someone from the water district, but I think. Uh, Based on my past experience, it's better to limit the number of speakers. Yeah. The whole meeting is just two hours, including the opening remarks and all those things that come in the beginning. So we only have about a one and a half hour. And agreed, agreed, but- And Q and A. Right, so typically we've had, we've had a panel of, of about four people. And, and again, the moderator is not gonna do any more than just make some opening comments. But the, the panelists, we're expecting to have someone from the water district. And uh, then we would just look for other people who are professional, you know, who could speak um, about, changing Calabasas yards and gardens to meet the new era of water scarcity. So um, so your format is a panel, not a presentation. You will not be having individual presentations and then Q and A afterwards, you're gonna do a panel. No, it, it was a panel that each gives their own presentation and then it became a, a Q and A with, that's historically how it's happened. So it's individual presenters that will then do a Q and A, and then so there'll be a subset of presenters, let's say three presenters or something, in order to cover the amount of time that we have. Correct, correct. So, for instance, the person from the water district would speak to people about, uh, you know, water issue, drip systems or gray water, or whatever about water, and then someone potentially, uh, you know, a horticulturalist or somebody who's okay. with gardening right. would speak about you know, to use native plants and, and somebody who's an expert on that, okay. about that aspect. So each, okay. each person would have a different expertise. And then at the end, typically, you know, half an hour is a lot of people in the audience typically have questions for, for any or all of the different panelists is how it's. Okay. Been. Okay. Cause a panel to me is a group of people that are sitting uh, together that ask are asked questions and then answer. So when you said panel, I was thinking, well, I think it needs to be more visual um, and presentations, presenters, and then Q and A based on that presentation is what I was thinking. So that's why I was just asking for clarification. So, so like when we did when we did it on the, uh, I'm, I'm going back and Alex, feel free to speak here as well. But when we did it on, for instance, on electric vehicles, there was someone that came from some government agency to talk about regulations on was AQMD, yeah. yes. AQMD, that's right. And then someone spoke about, and they spoke about trucks and cars and different, somebody spoke about the technology. And uh, so, I mean, you know, people gave different, okay. and, it's, and the same thing when it was, anyway, I, I, you get the idea. I, yeah. Okay, no, I, I needed clarification on the idea, to be quite honest, because I did, as I said, a panel to me is something a little bit different than what my last visit to the forum was, which was presentations. Um, okay. All right, uh, thank you for that point of clarification. Uh, do you have anything else to add? Andy's hand up. Oh, Andy, I'm so sorry. You keep jumping into my left corner and then I can't see your hand. Andy, please. Since given that three people is, is taking a larger uh, position of importance in our fair city, Perhaps somebody from Tree People could uh, be one of the presenters because they, they are definitely an expert on, on water issues. Andy, I if if you weren't a screen away from me, I would kiss you right now. I have left a voice message for Tree People and asked them if they could, if they could give us a speaker because they did such a wonderful job uh, 
speaking about a di some different topics and helping at Calabasas High School many years ago when they were trees being planted um, at, at that facility. So uh, wonderful, wonderful idea. I, if I don't hear back from them soon, I'm, I'm gonna sick you on them. Yeah, I will never stop you from kissing your screen, David. <laughs> Um, also, there's the Native Plant Society might actually be somebody. Um, I have a couple of contacts cool. who are interested. Um, yeah, Theodore Payne, California Native Plant Society. All, right. there's, a whole, there's a whole ton. If right. you guys are cool with it, um, feel free. If, if this is okay, feel free to maybe text me and Beth together or, or email or uh, okay. Or send it to Alex and Alex can send it to the whole commission. Yeah, I think of it if we text the, the two of you, we get into the yeah. yeah, I think don't, that's all right. Don't text it. You know what? It's not a Brown Act violation if you're it's if it's just a discussion. It's a Brown Act violation if we're talking about legislation. If all you're doing is talking about, hey, did you talk to a speaker? Right, correct. So. Um okay. Um it sounds like you have uh, many plans that you've already set in motion. Um, so thank you. Um, and, and we'll bring everything back. There's nothing that's going to happen without the full approval of the, of the, right. we're just trying okay. to get, I mean, we're just trying to get plans, you know, things set up in advance. That's why I'm right. saying if people have other ideas of speakers, terrific. Right. Okay. Um, I just have a quick question for Alex is, uh, are we permitted to have people sell things on site? Yes, we okay. have uh, in the past, we allowed people to have a table. Uh, for the uh, solar panels, we charge, I think, uh, $150 per table. But in other events, we just gave them a free table. Okay, but can they sell things? Yes, they can. Okay. Yeah. All right. I just had a question about that. So I didn't know whether, you know, what our rules were. Yeah. JC, may I just speak to that? So there is a, a, um, a woman, she's actually a neighbor of mine, and she actually showed up for the wildlife crossing, and somebody that Beth knows well um, named Abra who's, um, I don't know if you know, but she does uh, very, very much into native plants and that kind of thing. And she, uh, I think Beth already asked her if she'd be in, uh, interested in having a table. So she, so the hope is that we have a whole bunch of resources out in the hallway and that's just a, a compliment to the, the, the panel of speakers. It's, you know, the, just a lot of resources for people who come to the presentation. <laughs> But that's under the condition that we can hold a meeting in person in an enclosed space. We still right. don't have that direction that we can hold meet. Pumpkin Festival was outside, but this is an inside an auditorium. Uh, we have to wait uh, probably until mid-January to figure out whether we can hold an in-person meeting or whether it's going to be on Zoom. Okay. I, I'm, just, I'm optimistic because I mean they're having elections in that room today, so you know, I'm hoping. But you're right, Alex is absolutely right. It's... So, Alex, what, what was what was the when is the decision for that? We don't know. We have to follow the city council directions. In okay. each meeting, city council would pass a resolution, either continue or discontinue the emergency uh, situation. Okay. All right. Uh, do we have any other subcommittee um, updates from anybody? Okay. Uh, I just have one. I just want to say thank you to Lux and Noah who are on the call today that were um, uh, excellent support folks um, and represent representers for our commission at the Pumpkin Festival. And we were uh, extremely busy in the morning and to manage 6,000 visitors is something that uh, is a challenge at any time. And I thought that everybody did really well. Um, but uh, Whitney also joined us and she was great. And Beth was fantastic. And since she's not on the call, I will give her a shout out. She created literally like a lesson plan for students and to understand, uh, for students, for kids, to understand how, um, how they could take these rocks and paint them. And she sat down with them and she did a whole lesson in the middle of the reptile show. And I, I just, I was very impressed with her ability to uh, take an idea and, and, and really include the crowd and, and they loved it. So um, 
uh, thank you. And uh, that is a, a, a tough event to do and it was done very well. And I appreciate all the help that we got that day. So, all right. So now, now we can now go to the last two, um, the last two pieces of this uh, agenda item number three, which is first of all, recommendations for new subcommittees. Um, if anyone has a recommendation for a new subcommittee, can you please raise your hand? David. Yeah, thank you. I, I Based on the earlier conversation, I would like to uh, propose that we form a subcommittee to, uh, to work on the climate action plan for Calabasas. Second. Didn't we have this subcommittee formed in a few past weeks? I think we did. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't hear what you said, Alex. Subcommittee, you know what? what? We only no, have a subcommittee for climate action. <laughs> you know what? I think Alex may be right. I think it, Andy, it may, I think it's me and you, Andy. Yes. So basically, it would be to now sort of um, renew the charter for that in terms based on this new information. That's right. Okay. That's right. Okay. Thank so it's you, not Bob. a new subcommittee. It's just, it's an enhancement of the existing one. Maybe at least have it be in the minutes that that, that subcommittee is now actually can. Focusing on the RFP. Focusing on getting getting involved in the RFP. And beyond, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm just trying to say like, that's where it starts. Okay. And then, you know, and then also you could say following the, the lead of the consultants ideas and recommendations for where we would fit in. Like, cool. Okay, uh, the, we do have another subcommittee which now folds nicely into the uh, environmental forum committee, which is, uh, um, event, I'm sorry, event, which is uh, Whitney and Beth working on the native plant subcommittee. So it all kind of folds together. So right now we have two, subcommittees that we're handling basically for subject matters, but it now is very clear. Um, and I think that that works really well as we go into this part of the year and this part of our responsibilities here on the commission. Um, and last, the very last order of business is um, recommendations for future presenters and presentations for the uh, next commission meeting. Now, the next commission meeting is when we have all of the young people in for their uh, calendar acceptance, right, Alex? That is correct, yes. So I would say that we wouldn't have a, a, a presentation at that time because that's a, a pretty focused subject matter for that meeting. Is that correct? Right. We normally don't invite a guest speaker when we okay. have so many kids coming and teachers and principals speaking that would take uh, probably between 45 minutes to one hour of time right i remember it taking a long time to do so i don't recommend inviting any guests as speaker okay so the next the next meeting would be february and so i think that we can hold who we should or who would be appropriate to bring because this might bring back something related to the climate action plan and i would rather keep that slot open so that we can have an you know a, a appropriately timed presentation. Um, by that time, we may have a consultant on board, right? And right. they are scheduled to make at least three presentations to the environmental commission. Okay. So if by that time we have a consultant, that would be their first presentation to the commission. Okay. So I would like to keep that slot open in February. Um, to be ready to bring in something that's related to that. That would be my, that would be my preference. Um, uh, the other commissioners can weigh in on what they might think. And again, this is February, not December. So this is, this is quite some time from now. David? Yeah, I, I'm wondering if there's any way we could have another, like just as we met, uh, we had a, 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 a meeting that was, that was calendared between meetings. I'm wondering if there's any way you could, since the next meeting is going to be filled with just a, a lot of stuff with the kids and the calendar, and there's not going to be a lot of business. And then we don't meet again for two more months. It's three months from now. Right. I'm wondering if there's any way we could try, could, could plan something for early January, 
I, I was going to say end of December, but that's not going to no, maybe, yeah. maybe early January. Just and and it it's it's not that we have to spend lots and lots of time, but I mean we might even be able to be in person. I mean by that point, it's. Just, I would suggest that we leave this until December first when we meet again. Uh, December or December seventh, sorry, when we meet again and everyone is here, and then they can uh, and we can schedule it because it wouldn't be before then anyway. It's not going to be at the end of December, but it could be in January prior to the, like, cause the next one would be February 7th. So if there's some time between December 6th and February 7th, it would yeah. be in January. Right? Yeah, it's probably, it's, but you're probably right, JC, especially with two of them not here. It's hard to calendar anyway. Right. And I think, I just think we should, yeah, I think we can, um, the idea is good. We just, we need to be, we need to be ready to make that decision in December at the next meeting. That's my thoughts. Um, anybody else have any thoughts on, on future meetings or the keeping the slot open on the presenter for February? I'm, I'm hoping it's climate action plan related. I mean, that's my hope. Okay. We have completed our agenda, um, in, uh, uh, nearly two hour meeting. I appreciate everyone coming. Does anyone else have anything else? I would like to say thank you to Alba for um, being a good partner for us this evening. And of course, to Alex um, for your help in getting this organized uh, as well. So that would be it. Thank we need you. to adjourn. Thanks, Jason. Thank Bye. Thank you thank all. You. Thank you.